Hello friends, so today we can discuss or actually start a backtracking uh, playlist in which I will post uh, around 10 to 15 problems on backtracking including a lot of number of problems, standard problems and also problem asking interviews. So stay tuned along this playlist and uh, first we can discuss some medium problems from lead code. So I hope you understand my points. If you still have any doubts, you can mention it in the comment box. So uh, this is a subset problem. For first, we're gonna understand what is backtracking. Okay. So first, uh, first you have to for like understand what is recursion. And under recursion, there is two terms which is backtracking and DP. Okay. So now first, what is recursion? If a function call itself, then it's it is called recursion. It's that simple. If I want to find out the function value, let's assume a function value is fn and this function value cannot calculate fn by itself then i can subdivide or actually call this function again with n minus 1 value let's assume that i call this function again with n minus 1 value and let's assume that this function know that only the value of f of 1 this function already know like only know the value of f of 1 but it do not know the value of f of 5 so I will keep on calling this function with a smaller value. So I will call this function for f of 5, but it do not have the value of f of 5. So it will call it for f of 4 Then it will call it for f of 3, then f of 2, then f of 1, then f of 1 value it knows. So then it uses that value to calculate f of 2, then it uses that value to calculate f of 3 and so on. So it will backtrack to the original value and that's recursion, but recursion in which if the states, so as you can see, these are states, it's actually calling from one state to another state. This function actually stops. It's, it's go on a hold, which means that for calculating the value of five, it do not know. So it will call its function again. It call itself again, but because it is calling itself, this function, which is running, it got on hold. Okay. And then it's like a stack. This function goes in the stack f of five and then f of four is calling. So then f of four goes into stack and f of three is calling and so on. And then it is again popped out on the same manner again. And then because we know the value of f of 1, we will recursively or go back in this direction to calculate the value of f of 5. But if the particular states which we are calculating, if these values are calculating again and again, if this value is calculated again and again, let's assume that I want to find out some value of function in which I have to call out f of n minus 1 two times. But because I have already calculated the f of f of n minus 1 value in this branch so why should i already like find out f of n minus 1 in this value again or in this branch again so i can store these values somewhere else and that's how dp works so we will use dp with memoization so we will uh, discuss that in separate uh, like uh, playlist but that's the simple logic for dp and uh, like backtracking in backtracking we do not know the value for some part so we will recursively call itself till the point which we know the answer then we use that answer to calculate the uh, like the rest of the values and backtrack our answer to the original problem we are trying to solve. So I'll tell you with this example we are talking about. Uh, then as you can see, you are given a set of distinct integers as you can see in this one, two, three, return all possible subsets, the power set. Power set means as you can see it is one, two, three. So you have to calculate all the subsets. Which means that uh, if you take out any number and form a set, then all the possible sets. So like 1, 2, 3, then 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 3, then 1, 2, 3, and empty set. Now you can do the same using uh, bit manipulation also. And you can also search it on Geeks for Geeks and I can also make a video on it. But it's very simple in which you can uh, like iterate and find out using bits what are the total number of subsets. But in this video, we're going to discuss how we're going to solve this using backtrack. So uh, I prefer in backtracking problems, always try to think in like a DP manner, try to divide the problem into whether I want to take this element or not take this element. So I'll tell you how let's assume that I have this set, which is one, two, three. Okay. Now if I want to find out how many sets are there, I have for every number, for every number, I have two possibilities. If I want to make some set, let's assume that I want to make some set, which is one, two, one, two. If so, how I form the set from this original number, how I form the set, I deleted or I do not take this number three. 
if I want to find out some set one, then how I found this set? I do not take this number two and three. So for every number, I have two possibilities. Either I can take that number or I do not take this number. And that's gonna give like do. So see, if I do not take this number, then the it will become like an empty set. If I take this number, it will become a set of one. Now come to second number. Uh, I'll draw it uh, something here because it is in the middle. That's why you can uh, see it clearly. If I do not take this, it is an empty set. If I take this, it will become one. Then come to the second choice. If I take two in this, then it will be like this. So I am actually combining this empty set with two. So total is empty plus two, which is two. Or I do not take this, which is again empty. If I take two with this, it will become one two. If I do not take this with two, so it will become again one. And now come with three. If I take three with this, it will become two three. If I do not take three with this, so for every node I have two options. For every number, I for every node I can take whether this number with this node or not take this with node. So then it will become two again. I can take three with this, so it will become like this. Or I could do not take this, so it will become empty again. I can take three with this, so it will become like one two three. Or I do not take this three, so it will become one two. I can take three with this, so it will become like one three. And I do not take this three, so it will become one. And these are the possible eight answers: one two three four five six seven eight. These eight answers. So the last values represent the final answers, as you can see. So for every node, I'm actually taking that whether I can take this value or not. Now, see, any state is not repeating, so that's why we do not use DP in this uh, in this tree. Also, can we draw this tree for a very large data set, like for very large values? No. I'll tell you why. Because see, for every node, we have two possibilities. So for every value, I have to do two like calls, and for every call, as you can see. Uh, let's assume that I can do a maximum operation of 10 to the power 7 in one second. So, and I will actually do two operations, 2 to the power n. So n, yeah, like I can do by log or taking log on both sides. So it's just uh, I'll calculate it out. Now divide by log of 2, which is like around 20 like around 20. So if I have a binary tree like this, then the maximum n I can go is up to 20. Okay. So as you can see in this question, it is not actually given, but it cannot exceed 20. Then only I can use this backtracking formula. Then I like else I cannot use this because then it will over exceed the time limit. I hope you get my point because for every node, for every node, I have two possibilities. So I will call the function twice. Okay, so how many total calls I will make? 2 to the power of n. And the total number of calls in one second I can do is 10 to the power 7. So I can equate 2 to the power n equal to 10 to the power 7. So it will get around 20. So I can do around 20 levels, which means n equal to 20. So which means that 20 numbers can be there in the set and I can form different subsets. Else if it gets more bigger than I can do not do it in, in one second. So that's the whole logic for this. So I'll tell you how we code this out and we're going to discuss more with the future videos. It will become more clear with uh, more codes and more explanation. So what I've actually done and I, I have also already followed a standard procedure so that you can relate the codes. So because I have to output number of sets or the answers itself. So I have made a global vector of vectors. So this vector will show the answer. So this is the size of this initial vector, which is given. Current, this is a current. I'll tell you why this current is stored. This is a vector of current. And I've actually called this OK function with zero. Zero means that I've started with every first index. So for every number, I have to take that whether I can take this number or not take this number. I can take this number or not take this number. That's why I've started with the first index. Now with this, uh, this vector, this number or this set given to me. And current is the vector. And I will return out this answer, which is the total global, uh, all the sets. 
now this ok function is recursively calling itself how it is calling itself i'll tell you so what we are actually doing here is for every state like for every state i will first push this this current state so current stores the vector state so see uh, i can draw it out to even make it more clear initially the vector is empty so this is actually a valid subset so i will store this in answer then what will i do i have the numbers 1 2 and 3 okay so now i can either take this number or not take this number so i have some vector which actually store all these sets now so if i take this what i will do i will store this number in this vector and now i will take this number this actually current vector and pass it down to the next function because see for the next call i have to take this number or not take this number so for taking this number i have to also keep track of the previous sets i have formed so how i can see whether i will not take this number or i will take this number if i not take this number it is empty if i take this number the set will be one and then i will do this with these two points with these two sets so these two sets are the possible things so i have to also keep track of them so what i will do for every x value as you can see uh this x value so x means that because i have started from this zeroth index this is the zeroth index i will move from this x value which is the current index which i have sent zero and move from zero till the size of this num which is actually n zero till n and for every number what i will do i will either take it or not take it so if i take this then i what i will do i will push this number in the current i have told you current is the vector which is storing all these values so i will push this current uh, this number current value in the current and i will recursively call again my okay function and now i will make my i plus 1 now my new index is i plus 1 because i have taken this number my new index is i plus 1 and i will uh, like send this nums which is the the set only and this current and because there are two cases whether i can take this number or not take this number if i take this number i will push this number in this vector and then call this function again and then i will pop out this number it sounds difficult now but uh, if you follow this series i will already post like i will post two three more videos in medium version so it will become intuitively very easy for you so what we are actually doing here is we can either pass this number in the vector or not pass this vector so i have once passed this number in the vector and recursively call this function with this new vector and else i do not pass this number in the vector and i will recursively call this function again without this number so that's the whole trick so if i actually do not take this i have already like make this value again so that's why i have for every number i am just for any case i am just post like putting that number in the answer if i do not do this then i will either like i will do two things i will either push this number or i will not push this number okay and then in this what i'm doing i'm actually pushing this number calling this function again and then popping out this number and then it will store out all the values in this answer uh, i have actually drawn out some test cases you can review on this video and you can understand more but i will also post more video so you will understand more so that's the logic for this video If you still have it not, it like it's free to mention in a comment box. I'll see you next one. Keep coding. Bye.